a couple more examples of the ratio test. So this time we have the series n equals one to infinity cos of n pi cube root of n plus one divided by n square three to the n. All right, so um, looks like an ugly one and it is a little bit ugly. Um, so we're gonna set it up by substituting a sub n plus one and a sub n. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of, so this is gonna be cos of n plus one pi. And then we have the cube root of n plus one plus one. We're gonna divide that by n plus one square times three to the n plus one. Then we're gonna divide all that by the original series. Okay, so that's gonna be cos of n pi, cube root of n plus one, divided by n square three to the n. All right, now, um, one thing to remember with this is that the first two terms, or the first term in each of the numerator denominator, so this and this, these are alternating, okay? So we probably remember from the last section that those are alternating factors. And when we take the absolute values, those are just going to go away, all right? So um, these guys are just gonna cancel out and then we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal, okay? So now we get the limit as n approaches infinity of cube root of n plus two divided by n plus one squared three to the n plus one. And now we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal of the second or of the denominator. So that's gonna be n square three to the n divided by cube root of n plus one. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that trick where we just split everything that looks alike into its own little fra uh, fraction that'll be a factor, all right? So this is gonna be the limit as n approaches infinity of the cube root of n plus two over the cube root of n plus one. So this should be cube root of n plus two, sorry. And this will be the cube root of n plus one. We're gonna multiply that by n square divided by n plus one square. And then we're gonna multiply that by three to the n, three to the n plus one. All right, so. <clears throat> When you start having like indexes like this, okay, or when you start having like powers, all you do is you just go backwards and you put them all under or all in one sort of um, one fraction with that power on the outside. It's the reverse of the product of a power or quotient of a power rule, all right? So this is the limit as n approaches infinity of big cube root n plus two, n plus one, and then big quantity n over n plus one square. And then over this third one, I'm just gonna split off a three in the denominator and that's gonna be a three to the n. All right, so um, easy to see in the last fraction, that's gonna cancel. For the other ones, we're gonna to have to divide everything by n. So we can see the long-term behavior, okay? So um, almost done with this one. <clears throat> So cube root of n over n plus two over n divided by n over n plus one over n. And then for this animal, n over n, n over n plus one over n square. And then we still have that one third <clears throat> from this. We simplify. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity so this is the cube root of one plus two over n, one plus one over n, one divided by one plus one over n square times a third. And now we can go ahead and apply the limit to anything that's gonna have like a one over n or two over n, et cetera. And those are all gonna to go to zero. All right. So. After applying the limit, we get the cube root of one plus zero divided by one plus zero, and then one over one plus zero squared times a third. Um, this just turns into one. This just turns into one, and then we have the one third. So our limit 
is just one third, which is clearly less than zero. And what does that mean? That means that the series converges. Okay, so our original series, which was n equals one to infinity of cos n pi, and then, uh, this is so long ago, I forgot, cube root of n plus one, divided by n square three to the n converges. All right, so one last example of the ratio test. We have n to the n over n factorial. And this one's a dead giveaway because we know that we have a factorial, all right? So, um, and it's a dead giveaway to use the ratio test. So we're gonna have the limit and it looks pretty easy compared to the last one we had. So n approaches infinity of, we're going to add one. Now remember, we have to add it to both of the n's. So that's going to be n plus one raised to the n plus one divided by n plus one factorial divided by the original series n to the n divided by n factorial. All right, now, um, good news is there are no negative terms as n approaches infinity, okay? So, um, we could just lose the absolute values and then we can multiply by the reciprocal, all right? So we're gonna have limit as n approaches infinity of n plus one to the n plus one divided by n to the n. <clears throat> and then we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal. I kind of broke these off a little bit prematurely. So give me a sec. I'll... And if, if you're good doing that, you can certainly just skip that step. Um, but this is gonna be n plus one to the n plus one divided by n plus one fact times the reciprocal n factorial over n to the n. And then I'm gonna go ahead and group like looking factors. So these two look alike and then the factorials obviously look alike. So I'm gonna rewrite this as the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus one to the n plus one divided by n to the n multiplied by n factorial divided by n plus one fact. All right, now this one's a little bit sneakier than some of the previous because when we do this one, we're gonna break off this one and then we're also gonna simplify the factorial expression at the same time. And so this is gonna turn into the limit as n approaches infinity. So I'm breaking off one of the n plus ones and I'm left with n plus one to the nth power divided by n to the n. And we know the definition of n factorial, n, n minus one, n minus two, all the way down to three, two, one. And we know the definition of n plus one factorial, n plus one times n times n minus one times n minus two all the way down to three, two, one. All right, and now we can start canceling some stuff. Um, obviously, everything cancels except for the n plus one. And then notice that we have an n plus one that um, crosses out, all right? So now we can rewrite the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus one to the n divided by n to the n. Okay, or if we wanted to write that another way, we could write that as the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus one over n to the nth power. Or if we wanted to write it another way, this would be the limit as n approaches infinity of one plus one over n to the n. All right, now some of you might recognize this. All right, and if you recognize this, um, it's a basic form of a, a particular value, all right? But if you don't recognize it, then what you could do is you could go ahead and use the logarithmic sort of way of evaluating this sort of limit, okay? So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I know that this is gonna be equal to E, all right? But I'm gonna show you guys how to get to the E just because if you're stuck on an exam, um, and you might not know how to get to it because you haven't memorized it, at least you know the process. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna let y be equal to one plus one over n to the nth power. 
you're going to take the limit of both sides. So you're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of y equals the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the n. And then you're going to introduce a logarithm. So this is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of ln y is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of ln 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power. You can move this n in front, <clears throat> excuse me, and we're going to get the limit as n approaches infinity of ln y equals lim as n approaches infinity, <clears throat> excuse me, of n ln of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power. Now, this is the sneaky part of these types of problems is if you try to substitute infinity back in to here, all right, you're not going to get anything nice, okay? So you'll get like infinity times ln of one plus zero to the infinity power, all right? Um, what you're going to do is you're going to use an algebra trick. And you're going to make this into one over n in the denominator, all right? So this is the limit as n approaches infinity of ln, and the n, by the way, this n should, be, should go away at this point. Sorry about that. Okay, because we already just brought that n in front. All right, so, so when we evaluate this, this is going to be ln uh, or limit of ln 1 plus 1 over n divided by 1 over n. All right, now if we apply infinity here, that becomes ln of 1 divided by 0 or 0 over 0. And so what that means is that we can use L'Hopital's rule. And so this is going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over, so we're taking the derivative of the top, so that's going to be 1 over 1 plus 1 over n. We're going to multiply that by the derivative, all right? And the derivative of what's inside is going to be minus 1 over n squared. Okay? In the denominator, the derivative of one over n is minus one over n squared, all right? And remember, uh, the way I got that was I just rewrote each of these as n to the minus one, all right? And I just took the derivative that way. Good news is these cancel out, all right? By the way, we're almost done with this. So now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of one over one plus one over n. We apply it here. That's one over one plus zero, which is one. All right, but that is not the limit because remember, that's as ln of y approaches infinity. All right, so we have that the limit as n approaches infinity, excuse me, of ln y equals one. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to raise both sides to the e power. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of e to the ln y equals e to the first, or that just means that lim as n approaches infinity of y equals e. Now e is our limit, which is clearly greater than one, all right? Because e is 2.7, um, all right? Um, and so going all the way back to the beginning of the problem, and by the way, this is one you probably want to memorize. You want to have this limit memorized no matter what, okay? Because we could have just avoided all of this mess if we had this memorized, okay? But um, if we didn't have it memorized, that's a way to get to it, okay? Um, so going all the way back to the beginning of the problem, remember we did this ratio test. And so since E is approximately 2.7918, et cetera, all right? Um, we know that this is going to diverge, okay? So, so hence the series n equals one to infinity of n to the n over n factorial diverges. All right, so a tough one, okay? But um, that's, it. that's how we can use the ratio test to be able to evaluate these or to determine the convergence or divergence of these infinite series that we couldn't be able to do before, okay? 
All right, so we're almost done with um, these series tests. And the last one that we have to do is going to be the root test. And we're gonna look at that in the next video.